Club. Here's one back to school item that is tough to find this year. Teachers, they're in short supply nationwide. Low pay, overworked, and the lingering effects of the pandemic are just some of the reasons why school teachers are leaving the classroom. Well, the shortfall is becoming a major crisis across the country, and school districts are taking extreme measures to try to fill the gap. Charlene Aaron has the details. As the first day of class approaches, thousands of public schools are scrambling to fill vacant teaching positions. The teacher shortage is forcing many districts to make adjustments while offering unique incentives to attract educators. We're still recruiting as much as we can, but needless to say, when we're three weeks from the start of school, actually three weeks from today will be day two. When we're three weeks from the start of school, it's uh, it's time to start looking at some plan B options. Dr. Brian Austin of Chesapeake Public Schools in Virginia says his district is short some 60 teachers. We're seeing more retirements uh, than frankly, we have incoming new hires. The district looking to substitute teachers to fill the void. We may have some situations where uh, a sub that sub for us on a daily basis, we may need to pull some of them in in some long term sub positions. The problem is nationwide, driven by the pandemic, burnout, low pay and ever increasing demands. As an elementary principal back in the 90s, I would have um, 100 to 150 applicants for a kindergarten to second grade position, and I'm currently sitting at five. As of today, we have 16 teaching openings for the upcoming year. Florida seeing as many as 9,500 open teaching positions just weeks before the start of school. Those leaving the classroom say the decision is hard. I was definitely very emotional about leaving the kids, um, but I just started to realize that I needed to do it for myself. According to the Economic Policy Institute, the problem only growing worse, predicting a nationwide shortfall of 300,000 teachers by 2024. Desperate school districts are turning to extraordinary measures. Des Moines Public Schools is offering a $50,000 bonus to teachers, nurses, and administrators who are nearing retirement to stay with the district through the 2022-2023 school year. Florida's Department of Education now offers a temporary teaching certificate to military veterans who have not yet earned their bachelor's degree. The Dallas Independent School District setting aside $51 million for salary increases and $52 million for retention bonuses for the new school year. Like many districts, Chesapeake is raising teacher pay. And our starting salary this year is $51,500. Uh, that's up from last year, starting salary of 47150 So we've made uh, teaching salaries a priority, and then also our classified staff uh, had a 14% raise. Chesapeake is also offering teachers the option to work virtually. We will open up our own virtual academy for our students in grades kindergarten all the way through through high school. We have teachers who absolutely thrive and loved teaching in a virtual setting. Meanwhile, the Department of Education hopes to use money from the American Rescue Plan to help fill vacant teacher positions around the country. Andrew. Charlene, thank you for this report. It's alarming. Let's talk about federal incentives. For example, is the government willing to do something like forgive student debt for teachers? Andrew, there is some relief out there for teachers, thank God, because I think they do need it. But there's a program where they can apply for this really great uh, relief if they've been teaching for five years, for five consecutive and complete years in certain schools, they can apply for this relief. That's about $17,500. Also, teachers who teach in settings where they're really serving low-income families, they can apply for uh, student debt relief in those areas. And many of them are definitely going to jump on that, I assume. Yeah. Charlene, you know, there's been an increase in homeschooling and Christian schools in recent years. How big is that growth and why do you think it's happening? You know, CBN News has covered this from time to time. It's a huge, huge issue right now. Many, many people are really frustrated with public schools. You know, in 2019, there were 2.5 million students being homeschooled in the U.S. That number today has more than doubled. Parents are frustrated because of woke policies in public schools. Um, there's issues with the pandemic to mask or not to mask. Some districts say yes, some say no. And there's also the issue of transgender issues and CRT policies in public schools that families are just saying, Christian families are just fed up. And so there's this huge, huge increase in homeschooling as well as Christian um, schools are seeing a huge enrollment. Also 
also there are parents who are saying when the pandemic happened and there was the lockdown and students were learning from home, their kids thrived. Uh, in a remote learning setting. So they're going to continue and hoping to see that success as they do uh, teaching at home for their students. Wow, so many dynamics involved. Yeah. Charlene, thanks for your report. We appreciate you being with us today. My pleasure. Well, in other news, Democrats say they're optimistic about the midterm elections. Poll numbers, however, say something else. Ephraim Graham has more from the CBN newsroom. Ephraim. Andrew, Democrat leaders point to legislative victories as proof they're getting things done, but nearly three quarters of the American people say the country is on the wrong track. Dale Hurd has more. Democratic leaders say they're feeling energized about their chances in this fall's elections. Even while polls show most Americans believe the nation under their leadership is headed in the wrong direction. Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney is chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. We have had a summer of strength and we're going to buck history by making history. We've been counted out for a while now, but we are having a comeback and we have great candidates. Democrats believe the momentum is coming from the passage of Joe Biden's Inflation Reduction Act and the fact that soaring gasoline prices have come down a little. They believe Republicans have been hurt by the Supreme Court abortion decision and the FBI raid on Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Even Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell now says Republicans likely won't flip the Senate. There's a, probably a greater likelihood the House flips than the Senate. Candidate quality has a lot to do with the outcome. And Republican never-Trumper Liz Cheney, fresh off her overwhelming primary defeat in Wyoming, telling ABC's This Week she's starting a political organization to campaign against her fellow Republicans who are Trump supporters. Working to ensure that we do everything we can um, not to elect election deniers. But an NBC News poll shows almost three quarters of Americans say the nation is headed in the wrong direction. And Republicans say Americans will be voting their pocketbooks and security, angry over record high inflation and in some cities, unprecedented rises in crime. We're in a recession. We are experiencing the highest inflation, Chuck, in 40 years. Gas prices have doubled. There's an energy crisis in this country because this president has waged a war on energy. Another setback for Democrats and the administration is the two million people who have now crossed America's southern border this year, an all-time record. I would advise the president to go down to the border, Mr. President, and see what's happening yourself, because that's what leaders do. We might get a clearer political picture after two important primary elections this week in New York and Florida. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Turning now to Russia, where investigators say a car bomb killed the daughter of a political advisor to President Vladimir Putin, the bomb exploding on the highway as she drove her father's SUV. Her father, Alexander Dugan, is a Kremlin insider. Some call him Putin's brain. His views on Russian empire reportedly influenced the invasion of Ukraine. His daughter, 29-year-old Daria Dugina, was a TV commentator. Authorities say the attack appears to be a contract aimed at killing Alexander Dugan. Ukraine denied any involvement in the attack, though it expects retaliation from Russia. Here at home, millions of Americans at risk of flash flooding today. Drenching rains as much as eight inches in some areas are expected for Texas, Oklahoma and Louisiana. This comes as floodwaters already ripping through parts of Arizona and New Mexico. Carlsbad Cavins National Park forced to evacuate about 150 people. In Utah, Zion National Park, several hikers had to flee to higher ground in the face of rushing water. Search and rescue teams are still looking for one missing hiker. The Northeast also bracing for heavy rains today and tomorrow as well. Andrew. Thank you, Ephraim. Obviously, this goes without saying, but if your area is in a flood forecast, please pay attention to the alerts and watch the weather reports because, you know, a lot of times we hear about hurricane reports coming and we may pay attention more. But obviously, in just considering Kentucky last month, the flash floods are extremely dangerous. So please be alert about that, Terry. It happens so fast, yeah. even when you're alert, you know, it suddenly just yeah. changes.